there are things that have happened in the last five years that I never thought would happen in my lifetime. There's a lot of good, uh, there's a lot of beauty, uh, there's a lot of truth in what uh, the new uh, information, communication technologies, computational technologies are offering us as fundamental tools to build a better, a more connected, a, a healthier, uh, a more equitable uh, future. We have tools that in a very narrow way can really solve a problem. Um, the Watson Jeopardy uh, program beat humans on a task that is very cultural and, and factual and, and, and through language. So it was able to understand, uh, synthesize. have knowledge, and synthesize answers that did not exist before. There were some things that to me I was quite shocked about that a computer would be able to, to achieve that. And yet, even though it's artificial intelligence, the programs did not do it on their own. It was the ingenuity of humans who gave the programs, gave the data required to achieve these tasks. Uh, today, mostly AI is machine learning techniques that train for millions and hundreds of millions and billions of examples. Humans don't behave this way. Right. They, they get a few examples, they can learn from those few examples and then transfer it to all sorts of other situations. We don't know how to do that today, almost at all. But there are, I have seen <laughs> that algorithm or program that writes news stories. It does yes. make me a little bit concerned. Well, <laughs> so, so one thing I'll, I'll mention, if you pick almost any specific field, almost anything, it's, it's now you could think, well, could a computer actually do this? And there are um, areas like there are programs that can create beautiful artwork where a robot will mix the paints, compose the image, and produce really beautiful works. If they're getting into the creative arts, what areas can't, can a machine uh, yeah. apply? So. But what about the fear of like it going haywire? Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, some, some common application of AI that involves, I don't know, the FAA and air travel. Well, absolutely. It's a tool and a technology like anything else, and things can happen. You know, there have been worries that the Tesla self-driving like self car... Things can happen. It's terrifying, <laughs> right, yeah. to yes. people. Things can happen. If you look at it from a statistical point of view, we have accidents as humans every single day, right? And yet we'll have huge outrage if a self-driving car bumps into something as opposed to the thousands of humans who have accidents every day. Right, so there are different different levels. Um, I wouldn't want an autonomous system manning the button that could end the world. There you need fail-safe mechanisms, and AI is probably not the best way. When we think about the cit cities of today, when we think about the cities of the future, I mean, here we are in Los Angeles. The city that in fundamental demographic, economic terms, announces the future of our country moving forward. It's an amazingly diverse city. It's an amazingly vibrant city. Uh, we eat better, we dress better, we dance better because we are in a city that is so alive with a very complex genome of cultures, of languages. Los Angeles is the, cap the second capital to something like a dozen countries. Um, this means Korea, Korea yeah, Armenia, that's that's right. uh, Iran, mm -hmm. uh, Israel, uh, Guatemala, and you see Vietnam. The campus. Yeah. That means you can. Yeah. This never happened before in the history of the world. A city encompasses the entirety of the human condition. Los Angeles has changed, and you start to see cultural institutions in this city start to look at its orientation on a sort of global scale and see. Um, across 
uh, countries, how some of these threads of political, socio-economic, and cultural change are expressing themselves through art, you know, it, it becomes also accessible in a way that maybe just like traditional Western European art has been to a broader scale of people. And so I, I also see our cultural institutions in this city adapting in order to serve this city and the ever-changing nature of the population here. And that makes me optimistic. At a global scale, things are getting better over time. We have, we're more healthy, we're more educated, we're we more longer. wealthy, we live longer. You know, globally, things are getting better. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a divide is often mm -hmm. happening. And we need to be careful that, that you don't get the have and have nots. Um, there are certain aspects that we really need to make sure we, we do, and we're trying to address some of these in the technology fields. One is make access to all of to the internet and all of the knowledge and capabilities out there available. How can we get global access, not just for the one billion people who have it today, but for all seven billion people there? A second in which I think UCLA and others are, are leading is once you have access, you really need to distribute the education because because education really and knowledge really is the thing that lifts up the humanity that has brought a lot of this uh, this you know success and health and wealth and and prosperity to so many today but there's a lot of people who don't have that today so I think education uh, is is an area and I think of UCLA as a little microcosm of the, the entire city right and in a way because it's so many young people many times you will see changes and trends happening here first because they're going to grow up and they will expand out into the city. You know, the great Loris Malaguzzi, the father of Re Reggio Children, once said, you know what education should be? It should be a nostalgia about the future, where we're going to meet the youth. What is that future? How are we going to make it better, more inclusive, mm -hmm. more diverse, more vibrant, more just yeah. at a time of growing inequalities? at a time of growing conflicts. Okay. Talk a little bit about the nature of the technology, the radio, and the citizenry. One of the things that has always attracted me to radio is, is sort of the low-tech nature of it, that you can be in the developing world and have a population that's illiterate, but they can get information from a radio. And that exists and persists. And I think that when you look at emerging democracies or you look at places that have resisted a democracy, you still have people getting access to information through the radio. That's a very um, helpful frame because um, the world of uh, fake news the world of alternative facts, there's a lot of uh, anxiety. Help us with that. I just believe that the truth wins out in the end, that people, it may not be on our timeline when we want it to happen, but I think if you look across history, ultimately I am optimistic that the truth emerges. Adam, the great Stephen Hawking said what he's most afraid of is artificial intelligence. Yeah. Should we worry like Professor Hawkins or? There's uh, a researcher named Andrew Ng. Very, he's chief scientist at mm -hmm. Baidu and at, uh, he was, uh, started the Google, Google Brain project. Uh, he says AI and this is like the Mars overpopulation problem. Mm -hmm. Someday we're going to arrive on Mars. We're going to colonize the planet. We're going to create smog and it's going to be traffic jams everywhere why aren't you worried about the Mars overpopulation problem? <laughs> As an AI researcher, there's nothing to do. We're not there yet. There's right. nothing I can do. It's something to think about at a theoretical mm -hmm. level, um, but the reality of it being close uh, is, in my opinion, and in most people I know who actually work in the field, it is not there. So the fears of a computer becoming super intelligent and being conscious and 
taking over. It's really right. not something that we can, right. A, do anything about or we should worry about anytime soon. What do you think the future will look like in 20 years? I think in 20 years we'll have more mobility at a lower cost and hopefully a better carbon footprint. And I think that ability to move and travel will, I hope, create connections between people and cultures. I agree. I think the world uh, will be uh, ever more miniaturized, ever more interconnected, and fragile. And I think mm -hmm. that the challenges around the fragility that comes, issues of environmental degradation and from environmental dystopia, and the, the catastrophic movements of people that come because of war and conflict. Three countries in the world account for half of all refugees and asylum seekers. If we can fix those conflicts, the world would be more peaceful than ever before in the history of humanity. Mm -hmm. uh, likewise with climate change, I think that there is a consensus as to what will it take to interrupt the, the warming of the planet. Every 10 years, the way people interact with computers changes. I believe that the assistant, someone, something like a Siri, can scale to become the next major interface paradigm. My wish for 20 years, and I think it is on humanity to find better ways at global problem solving. Um, so what we will need is better tools and really raise the collective intelligence so we can really be efficient in, a, in solving these problems. Right now, I think that, like you said, the will and the efficiency is, is, is not quite there. Maybe the media, the, the false information we were talking about earlier, maybe it confuses the issues and there are different views. If we can come together globally and look at what's real, what's true, what's, what's factual, what are, what are the problems, what are the solutions, let's talk about them, discuss them, and find solutions to them, I think we have hope, and, and I'm an optimist. Thank you.